Hello, this is Dean Phoenix with another Final Fantasy X video, this time continuing on from where we left off my overpowered walkthrough and this is a sort of break in the actual walkthrough part and this is where we start the end game content. So instead of going straight to Sin and carrying on with the end bosses and the Sin area of the game, you actually have free reign of the airship after you finish the bosses in Xanakant and so I'm going to start the post game content because that's the way I prefer to play it and do everything as early as possible. Now when you get the airship after beating Unaleska and making sure that you got the Suncrest, make sure you see that in the last part of the video, <coughs> you can get the airship and use the search function and then we're going to search for Baj Temple which is what I mentioned at the end of the last video and this is the first thing I like to do because assuming you've got all of the destruction sphere prizes through the six temples and the cloisters of trials, you'll be able to find the Baj Temple, add it as a location by searching the go. location I just showed there on the map, and then you will be able to get the Aeon Anima, who is one of the most powerful Aeons and is extremely strong and a lot of fun to have. So you get to Baj Temple and you'll recognise this area from the first part of the game, and first things first, I want to sort out the gear before we take on the boss to your scanner. So uh, there's no point having capture weapons for this little bit, so just uh, switch to a few of your stronger weapons if you can. I didn't have any problems with this boss because as part of the overpowered playthrough I already had the three strength spheres from dodging 50 lightning strikes, which I did the first time through the thunder planes. But if you don't have that additional strength, it can be a little bit of a problem. So one of the things to bear in mind is that this boss can petrify you underwater, which is a big problem because it can shatter your characters and they can disappear from the character of the fight. Uh, so if you have any stone ward or stone proof armors for Riku, Tigus or Waka, those are a good idea to use. Now you can use your overdrives or limits and uh, you can make sure that you beat the boss pretty easily if you're using those. As you can see here, uh, I am actually able to just beat the Scanner without really using uh, that many of the overdrives here, uh, but it is an easier option if you want to use the overdrive to actually hit it. If you're really struggling with this and you are missing uh, quite a few or you just don't have the power to be able to do it, then what you can do is there are certain items you can mix and you can get the overdrive with a uh, mix which is trio of 999 and if you've got the wings to discovery you can get 30 of those as one of the Union Chocobo prizes. You can mix two wings to discovery and it makes a trio of 999 and then you can take it out really easily so one blitz ace or slice and dice or attack wheels, anything like that. So three of 999 is extremely useful and can make things like that a little bit easier. So once you've beaten the boss you may get a drop for a weapon with no encounters which is very useful. So uh, here it's a, uh, got it for Lulu's weapon and if you equip that you won't get any encounters. So that can be quite useful after you've finished all the capturing in an area or if you just want to avoid them for avoid enemies encounters for some of the end game side quests such as the ones where you do in the Celestials. Now when you get into the Baj Temple here you have to activate these six statues and each one corresponds to a Destruction Sphere prize. You have to have got the Destruction Sphere and open the chest and if you've been following the overpowered walkthrough of mine that is one of the things I mention and it's featured all the Cloisters of Trials. If you missed Makalania or Besaid they will now be guarded by Dark Aeons Dark Shiva and Dark Valfor, respectively. So you're probably going to have to wait to get Anima, which means you're going to have to wait to get the Major Sisters. So, I uh, hopefully you have got these six Destruction Spheres, but if not, you're going to have to wait to get Anima. Assuming you have got them and you can activate all of the six statues at the temple, you can then go and pray. And the Faith here is Seymour's mother, and she will give you Anima. Now I actually stop raising Yuna's stats here so I just store up any S levels I've got from this point onwards until a bit later in the game because if you keep her stats lower it is easier to permanently raise Anima's stats and that makes it easier to fight Jumbo Flan later. Now that's not essential but it's something you can bear in mind. I'll be coming on to that when I discuss capturing in a bit more depth later on. Now the first time you come to this juncture in Makalania, this is the part, this is the screen you want to go to next, so come to Makalania Forest and there will be a woman and her child there. Now when you talk to them, uh, they will say that their father is missing and then you run off on the screen to the right and then you need to uh, track down the father and then after you speak to him, you can come back and 
mother and father will be stood there. After you speak to the mother and father a couple of times, they will tell you that this their child has gone missing, and then you run up this path and speak to the child. Now this is where you use the cloudy mirror that you got from the Remyam Temple, just for winning the race without opening any of the prize chests the first time and it will change the cloudy mirror into the celestial mirror and what this allows us to do is it lets you open the hidden chests uh, for the celestial weapons so each character has an ultimate weapon or celestial weapon hidden around the world and the celestial mirror lets you open the chest to get the weapon and when you first get them they will only have no AP as a terrible ability but if you get the crest and the sigil for each one then you will be able to power up the weapon and they are the best weapons in the game so we need that celestial mirror just so that whilst we're doing capturing we can also open those chests and then we'll be able to power them up. Now assuming you spoke to Owaka which I mentioned as a, a to once sorry Owaka's brother uh, if you spoke to him on Mount Gagazette you'll be able to buy four slot armor from him which is very important and so you can buy one for either Tidus or Riku and Riku is probably best because then uh, what we're going to do with that armor is finish all the capturing at the Thunder Plains and that will let us put auto haste on a four slot armor so it'll be auto haste and three free slots and you're best off doing that with Riku because what you're going to do after that is later in the capturing process you're going to customize ribbon and you only get enough dark matters to do that once so what we the plan is to get an empty four slot armor for Riku to finish the capturing at the thunder plains and then put auto haste on that armor with the items that you get as a prize and then later on use the 99 dark matters you get to put ribbon on that so Riku will have auto haste and auto ribbon uh, and ribbon sorry so yeah buy a four slot armor for ribbon for Riku equip it and then after we've caught 10 of everything we can go and collect the prizes and you can see here that you will sometimes still miss the quack tiles so um, just make sure that it's Waka hitting those if at all possible now as well as capturing 10 of everything you need to uh, on the thunder planes you need to decide if you're going to do the lightning dodging now it's not 100 percent necessary because lulu is one of the weakest characters and she is the weakest in my opinion because she has the worst overdrive and long animations which is all that really sets characters apart in the end game once your stats are maxed but you see those two dots on the ground here this is in the southern plains you want to find this crater and this is the crater trick and it's quite easy to dodge if, uh, in my opinion, if you have the No Encounters weapon or you customise it. I've done a separate video about No Encounters. So if you have No Encounters you can do that dodging. I would very seriously recommend you try and dodge at least 50 if you haven't done it already. Because it gets you three strength spheres and that makes a massive amount of difference and is very helpful for the end game. If you're able to dodge the 200 you will get the sigil. Now I'm playing on the Xbox One and they've reset all of the sigil names to be the original planets. So that's the Mars sigil. In your version, it, whichever you're playing, it may well be the Venus sigil. It's Lulu's sigil for her powering up her celestial weapon anyway. So again, not 100% necessary, but if you want the achievement or the trophy, or you want Lulu's weapon, you can dodge the lightning bolts. Now I just um, turned off the volume, put on a playlist, and you see there I actually overdid it by quite a bit. There's 309 lightning bolts. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So if you're able to do that, just listen to some music, put a playlist on, a podcast or whatever, and try and dodge it. Now you've got Anima, and Anima is extremely strong, so you can come back to Ramiem Temple and fight Belgamine and her Aeons. And when you beat the first five of her Aeons, so up to Bahamut, it will be extremely easy with Anima. I taught her a few extra skills as well, uh, which we'll come on to a bit later. Well, after you're able to defeat Belgamine's Aeons, which, like I say, should be very easy with Anima, you will get the Flower Scepter. Now, the Flower Scepter is that prize you get for winning there. And if you can't caught one of every monster on Mount Gagazette, which you should have done if you bought capture weapons before leaving the Calm Lands the first time through, then you will have also received the Blossom Crown when you speak to the Monster Arena owner. And so if you have the Blossom Crown and the Flower Scepter, and you have all of the other Aeons, so you need to have the five regular Aeons, which we'll have already, and you need to have Anima and Yojimbo as well, so even just having the two items isn't enough. But if you have the two items, the Flower Scepter, the Blossom Crown, 
and Yojimbo and Anima and the other Aeons, you will be able to get the Major Sisters. So unfortunately, if you aren't able to get Anima because you missed a Destruction Sphere prize, you also won't be able to get the Major Sisters, which is a shame because Anima and the Major Sisters are extremely powerful. And they make some of the end game and monster arena bosses a little bit easier. So, hopefully, you have got the Destruction Sphere uh, treasures throughout your playthrough and you can get Anima and the Major Sisters. And if you just go back into the Temp Chamber of the Faith here after you've got the Major Sisters, immediately after, you can get an extra uh, sphere as well after watching a little cutscene. So, the next thing to do is speak to Belgamine again and you have to defeat all of the Aeon. So, you have to defeat Anima. Um, for which you can use Bahama and if you charge up his overdrive you'll be able to manage it with Bahama or you can use a couple of the other Aeons to finish an uh, Belga means Anima off and then I just used Anima to beat all of the rest of Belga means Aeons and they're all very easy apart from the major sisters. And before you do this uh, there's a couple of things key abilities that I always like to teach Anima especially because we're going to use them to fight Jumbo Flan later on which is part of the stat max in progress if you want to eventually raise magic. So haste is a really good one if you've stolen chocobo feathers uh, from the Quackwars or the Cactuars in um, Thunder Plains or Beaconel. It only takes I think 10 chocobo feathers to teach haste and so that's a really good one to start with. I've also taught Anima Protect Shell reflect and dispel so those are useful for reducing damage in longer fights and uh, reflect and dispel we also use later on again for jumbo flan uh, anima has the attack pain uh, which will cause a big delay in her turn so you don't want to use pain if you can help it but it is extremely powerful and it will also be in a magic based attack hit mindy who is quite an evasive uh, on there when we're trying to hit mindy on the far left but what you can also do is, I have taught Anima the ability double cast, so you should uh, be able to teach her double cast if you uh, have the items for it. And then she already, uh, Anima already knows the Arga spells. So here you can see you can just use double cast and the uh, Arga, Faraga, whatever else. And uh, if you're struggling to hit any of the major sisters, uh, then you can use those spells instead. So yeah, just to recap, haste, shell, protect. Reflect, Dispel and Double Cast are all very useful for Anima and then later on I'm going to teach her Flare. Now part of the reason that I said I would be saving up S levels with Yuna from this point onwards is because your Aeon stats can be uh, in very loose terms, there's more to it than this, but it can be based on either how many battles you fought or what Yuna's stats are and then you can permanently raise the Aeon stats uh, using the mana spheres, speed spheres, power spheres, the ones that you would activate nodes, you can instead use a bunch of those to increase an Aeon stats permanently. And this is easier to do when the stats are low. So I'm going enough. to leave Yuna's stats low and so that I can permanently raise Anima stats and a little bit later on that will make it easier to beat Jumbo Flan which is one of the most annoying parts of Thank the leveling process no for stat maxing. <laughs> So I'll come on to that in a bit more detail when I discuss the capturing a little bit later on. So uh, just to recap, we have uh, unlocked Anima and we've got the Major Sisters and we've done the capturing in the Thunder Plains. It should be very easy to catch 10 of everything there. And if you're doing so, you can also have done the Lightning Dodging to get the Sigil. And so there, you after you've sent Belgamine, after you defeated all of her Aeons and sent them, you get the Sigil for Yuna's ultimate weapon, uh, the Celestial Nirvana. And you should have the Crest, which is very easy to get. That's just in Besaid right at the start of the game. And then the actual weapon itself, this is how you use the Celestial Mirror. So you need to have the mirror upgraded to the Celestial Mirror. And there are chests throughout the game where you can get the actual Celestial weapon. So this one here is the monster arena uh, it's just next to the owner and you'll be able to open that chest and get nirvana and then when we speak to him because we've caught, captured one of everything in the thunder plains you actually want to capture 10 of everything you can get 99 chocobo wings and customize auto haste on the four slot armor that we bought for riku you can also return to Bar's temple if you want and you can use the celestial mirror to get this hidden chest and get onion knight uh, which is lulu's celestial weapon if you want that so thank you for watching and uh, please stay tuned, like and subscribe for more videos about the stat maxing process and the celestial weapons. Thank you for watching.